Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to the RCMP course. At this part, we're going to introduce the mechanism and application of global security address bonding. And firstly, let's take an overview of this. Global security address bonding, the mechanism is similar to that of port security. Global security address bonding is that authorized IP and MAC addresses are bound in global configuration modes. SDAs whose state packets match binding entries can move between ports of the device without limitation. So from here, you can see the global security address binding is a mechanism which is used to control the packets which can be forwarded or be received by the interfaces of the ports. And it's used to ensure a package sent to ports. Port security focuses on port control, while it cannot control packets to the device. Because port security is mainly focuses on the control of the, the interface. For example, if we enable port security, maybe two interfaces on the same switch are isolated. So why it is not ensure the Packet is controlled the interface. Compared with port security, global security address binding controls the packets that can enter the device and that are discarded. After the global IP address and MAC address binding function is manually configured, the device verifies the IP address and MAC address binding in relationship of import packets. Only receives IP packets whose South IP and South Mac measure security address binding entry and discard the packets that do not match. So from here we know that the control package is based on the binding entries. You can see on the switch, there are multiple entries. As you can see, user one's Mac and user one's IP, user two's Mac and user two's IP, user three's Mac and IP. So only the packets can match one of these entries. It will be received, okay? And uh, next, there are two global security address binding modes. After the MAC and IP address binding is configured in global configuration mode, a command needs to be run for the security address to take effect. And uh, it can be used no matter in IP version four, or IP version six network. The IP address and MAC address binding function applies to all ports of the device by default. So once you configure it on this device, it will be enabled on all the ports. You can configure excluded ports on which this function does not take effect. In general, the uplink Pay attention here. Uplink ports of the device are configured as excluded ports. For example, in this figure, the, the port which is this port connected with the port switch. So you can think about this, why this port should be configured as the excluded port. Because you can see this is the uplink port which will receive a large number of packages from the core switch and the core switch is connected with maybe another device, another switch, or a lot of switches. So we cannot figure out which package would be received by this interface, or we, we cannot configure one entry for each 50 source. So if we do not set this port to be excluded port, it's possible that most of the packages will not be received by the access switch. So the users in the network will lose the connection with others. Okay, this is the reason why we set the uplink port to be the excluded port. After knowing the working principle, next let's see the configuration. The first three lines is quite easy to understand. Address bind, IP address, MAC address, IP address, MAC address, IP address, and MAC address. Right we are binding the IP and MAC in the global configuration mode. And next, address bind in store. We are applying the binding entries in global configuration mode. Address bind, bind filter logging. By using this command, we can enable the logging. 
for global security address binding. Each time when the package is blocked by this function, it will generate a log and you can see this log. It will be printed. And the last configuration is uh, excluded port. Address bind uplink G24. So we are setting the interface G024 to be the excluded port. It will not be affected by the uh, address binding function. After finishing the configuration by using command shield address bind, you can see the entries here, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, and the IP addresses with their binding ways. Okay, so about this part, let's see the summary. The global security address binding function verifies the IP address and the MAC address binding relationship of packets sent to the device. And it discards packets that do not match any binding entries. And for the excluded ports, it can be configured for global security address binding. In general, the opt-in ports of a switch are configured as excluded ports. Okay, and that next is a question. Which of the following options about global security address binding are correct? Let's see them. A, excluded ports can be configured for global security address binding. Packets received by excluded ports are not limited by binding entries. It's true, right? This is the motion principle of the excluded ports. And B, after the global security address binding entry is configured, you need to run the address bind install command for the entry to take effect. Yes, right. this command is used to uh, enable, enable the commands to all the interface. So B is true. C, when the packet is filtered out based on global security address binding entry, device do not display related logs by default. Yes, it's true, right, it's true. By default, it will not print any logs. If you need, you should use a command to enable this function. Okay, so this is about the working principle and the application of the global security address finding. Okay, thanks for your listening.